people who lived here that didn't want to leave had no choice. In the 1700s, the Moravians, which were uh, a Protestant uh, sect in Germany, got orders in council from the British Crown to come and settle Northern Labrador and to provide missionary services to Inuit. And that um, first settlement or that first European settlement that we had um, was started in the mid 1700s and has lasted till today. We're here in Hebron. Tell me a bit more about this place, because this is a, to me it feels like it's a symbol of a larger story. Right. So Hebron is a community that was relocated in 1959. And, and the people of Hebron were relocated to many different places along uh, the Labrador coast. It was closed because the government, uh, the Moravian Church, and uh, the Grenfell Association all decided that this was too expensive a place to administer. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a discussion with the community about whether or not the community wanted to. It was uh, something that was decided for them by those who were in control of their lives. The decisions that were made here were in part in consequence of Canada not accepting indigenous peoples as equals. That we didn't have self-determination. We were, uh, in many ways, wards of the state. And, the de and decisions were made for us. That's why uh, our lands weren't considered our lands. And what did that do to the, to the identity? People went south without the ability uh, to get new jobs, without homes, and also without the skills that they need to be successful in the communities that they were going to. So th over time, people always have uh, wanted to come back. That never materialized, and uh, over time, that hope has been replaced with um, a sorrow for the fact that it is gone. So on that, uh, what is the way moving forward in your mind? This country, uh, doesn't have the infrastructure uh, to be call itself a true country yet because there is a whole 35 percent of, of Canada's landmass that the Canadian public and uh, lawmakers often forget. 35 percent of Canada's landmass is occupied by Inuit yes. people. So I don't think a lot of people really no. understand that. So yes. <laughs> That's right, crazy right. man. So right now in 2017 <laughs> 35% of this country is co-managed by Inuit through constitutionally protected land claim agreements. In that is also 50% of Canada's coastline. Unfortunately, our socioeconomic status uh, is, lags far behind mm -hmm. Canadians. So we're trying at the national level to tell this story but also to engage with Canadians and to try to make Canadians think that they're a part of the solution too. Mm -hmm. That social equity should be for all Canadians, just not some Canadians. Well, this has been a huge, uh, you know, eye-opener for me. And as a Canadian, I, I'm looking very much forward to learning more and having more conversations and going deeper. And, and I think I encourage all Canadians to, to get to know more Inuit people and talk to elders and talk to people you don't know until you meet face to face and you have conversations. So thanks so much, man, for this. Appreciate Absolutely. it. One society does not have to dominate another for the, them both to thrive. If Inuit don't have uh, the place that all Canadians believe that they share together, then we haven't built our country to, to the best that it possibly can be.